Yeah, give the Lord a clap of him. You may take your seat. Say amen. Yeah, it's the birthday of a very great gentleman in the church. You may take your seats. He's been a great servant ever since he came forward and said, I want to serve the Lord in this church. He has been serving the Lord. And these beautiful ladies are going to sing a romantic birthday song for him. Let's welcome the King Abraham and pray for him. And after us, we'll sing for him. Say amen to that. Hey, hey, you all like him like that. I'm jealous of your breakthrough. <laughs> amen and amen. He's been great. Amen. Spread forth your hands towards him. He's a humble man. He's a great servant. I tell you, when I, I find this man and other young men mopping the floor, cleaning the washroom for women, I marvel. I say, hey, men. Because he's not a boy, he's a man. Say amen to that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, Spread forth your hands towards him, begin to pray for him. Oh, glory to God. Father, I pray for this young man. You said that you would crown the humble with salvation. And you will promote those who abase themselves. Even as you gave Jesus a name. Because he humbled himself. May you give him a name. Because of his humility. Establish him in ministry. And use him to achieve great things. Bless him with life, with joy, with money. And a beautiful, fruitful wife. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, hey Charlie, the guy said amen to the beautiful, fruitful wife. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> All right, so let's sing now. Yeah. Uh, about this song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Amen. amen. It's wonderful. Abraham, you are blessed. I'm jealous of your breakthrough. Say amen to that. But the Lord is on your side. Amen and amen. Alright, I have a few minutes and we'll be over with this particular service. And then we are coming back at 11. All women are coming back at 11. If you are clad in your pink and white, I would like it. Say amen to that. And I'm going to preach. I'm going to talk about women. So many women in the Bible I'm going to categorize them in maybe three, four, or five groups of women. Amen and amen. And we are going to pray accordingly. But the theme for our celebration this time, we want to stand with mothers who have lost their children by the sword of Herod. Amen and amen. Yeah. Oh, not the sword of our guy. You see, I've swept you. <laughs> We are, we are standing with women who have lost their sons or daughters by the sword of Herod. When there is a decree that kill all children below the age of two, sometimes both the guilty and the innocent ones may be slaughtered. Are you getting the point? So we want to stand with those women. Say amen to that. Yeah, and I thank God for wisdom. So we are standing with those women. We want to celebrate this Mother's Day. Standing with all women who have lost their children by the sword of Herod. Herod in his rage, there was evil. He felt the security of the nation was threatened. So he gave a decree and said, kill all children. Kill all people who are troubling the peace of the nation. And sometimes whilst we are trying to kill the criminals, we end up also killing some innocent people. How many of you get the point? So as many as have been lost by the sword of Herod, we want to stand with their mothers and pray. And also pray for our own children that the, ro- the sword of Herod cannot kill our children. Say amen to that. Alright. So, just to prepare your hearts as a church, we are in our fifth week of victory. And this week, we are securing victory over premature death. Say amen to that. 
Uh, you didn't say a, a good amen. Yeah, by the time this service is over, you cannot die before your time. Say amen to that. By the time this service is over, God will satisfy you with long life and fill your mouth with good things in the mighty name of Jesus. By the time this service will, is over, nobody in your family shall die prematurely. The Lord will preserve our lives and cause us to live the full length of our days in the mighty name of Jesus. And let all that believe, shout a very big Amen. Yeah, so we are looking at the secrets to secure victory over premature death. Securing victory over premature death. But we want to know what is premature death. What is premature death? When we say someone have died prematurely, what are we talking about? So go to Psalm 90 verse 10, 11 and 12 and let us look at what the Bible describes as a full term life. Amen. Full term pregnancy is 40 weeks. But some children decide to come much earlier than that. We call them premature babies, isn't it? So some people also decide to die earlier than God is expecting them to come. You see, when you send someone, there is a time you expect the person to return. There is a duration. And you don't expect the person to come earlier than the expectation. If, for instance, you bought a bus at Circle, going to Kumasi, and you arrive in three hours, and it's a commercial car, I mean, the group men will have to question the driver because the driver has arrived too early. Are you following what I'm preaching? It's not a good thing. It could be very dangerous. So let us look at life expectancy. I understand that life expectancy in Ghana for men, I think, is 55. But that is for Ghana. But this is God. God's life expectancy for all of us. What the Bible says that because sin has abound, this is how long men are likely to live based on how well they live their lives. So let us read the scripture together. It said, And the days of our years are what? Three score years. Amen. And ten, which is seventy years. This is life expectancy. If by reason of strength they be, then what will happen? Four score Yet is their strength labor. So usually what Moses is telling us by wisdom is this. It is very possible to live a healthy, happy life till age 70. It's very possible. That is the life expectancy. It doesn't mean you should die at 70. But ideally, I mean the minimum we are expecting for every one of us is to live a healthy peaceful, joyful life for 70 years on earth. Are you getting the point? But sometimes you are blessed so you would live beyond 70. Sometimes you are blessed you live beyond 70. But Moses is saying that usually people who live beyond 70 are, are, are unable to live a healthy life. They are full of labor and work. Sorrow, so little, little pains here and there. Today, my knee, tomorrow, my waist, this, that, a little, little problem, including men like George Bush. He's quite an old man, but when uh, 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 recently, who died? His wife. He came in a wheelchair, and right after that, he was also hospitalized. And this Nelson Mandela was sick most of the times. I just want to mention the prominent people. Let's mention even pastors. Billy Graham had little, little problems when he grew old. Recently, Maurice Serilo broke his leg. It's because of old age and all that. Are you following what I'm preaching? So, life expectancy for a believer is 70 years. But if you have lived well, living well, not necessarily living righteous, but living well as in paying attention to what kind of food you eat, what kind of women you roll with, what kind of um, water you drink and things like that could allow you to live a little longer. How many of you get the point? If you roll with the wrong kind of woman or men, you are likely to die prematurely from a disease. So we are preaching about escaping premature death. How to live your full days. 
So let this be your faith. Take this. This is the word of God to you. Except in the cases of martyrdom, or except in the cases of becoming a martyr, to be being killed because of your faith, nobody in this church must die before 70 years. Lift up your right hand and say amen to that. There are times when people die earlier than 70 and it's because they were killed for what they believe. An example of that in the Bible is our Lord Jesus Christ. He laid down his life. He didn't die. He laid down his life. Are you getting the point? So he was nailed to the cross. He was killed. Are you getting the point? He was killed because of what he believes. I don't know how old John the Baptist was when he died. But John the Baptist was also killed because of what he believes. Our apostles, most of them were killed because of what they believe. And that is not what I'm talking about. So except in the case of dying as a Matthias or a Matthadom, none of us must die before the age 70. It is the minimum. That is the youngest age you should die. If you die at 70, we should write on your obituary, what a shock. Are you following what I, 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 I'm, I'm preaching? If you die, if you die around like 30, 40, 50, that one, Charlie, we should write, what a foolish death. Because there must surely be something that have led to such an early death. How many of you are following what I'm preaching? God does not want any of us to die prematurely. God wants us to live to 70 years. A minimum expectation for a sinful man. For a wicked man, God wants you to live up to 70. For a good man, God will want to take you to 80 and beyond. But sometimes it comes with little, little problems here and there. But I even pray that God will give you long life. And you will never have sorrow or labor in those days. He will fill your mouth with good things also. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will discover the anointing and become like Asher. You will dip your feet in butter. And as your days shall be, so shall your strength be. The older you grow, the stronger you shall be. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to your kidneys, to your liver, to, to the cartilages in your knee. I speak, I speak right now. Receive fresh, fresh, fresh liver. In the name of Jesus, fresh kidneys. May there be regeneration to your hormones, the hormones in your body. I I speak to your heart. I speak to your muscles. I speak to your blood. I speak to your postrates. I speak to your breast. I speak to your womb, sir. Receive fresh life in the name of Jesus. You shall not die young in the name of Jesus. You shall not die sick in the name of Jesus. You shall not die weak in the name of Jesus. When you are 137 and God wants you to die, maybe like Moses, you will be able to climb a mountain. You will tell your wife, I am going up the mountain to meet the Lord and I may not return. And you shall climb a mountain like a father to, to go to the top to go and die. Your strength shall be in you by the time you are dying in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not become like the prophet who died sick with anointing in his bones. I drive out sicknesses out of your lives, out of your children's life in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Receive that touch of the Lord. So we have been talking about the fact that God does not want us to die now. Let's go to verse 11. Who knoweth the power of thine the Lord of thine, of thine anger, even according to your wrath, whatever. Verse, verse 12. Verse 12. Look at this. Look at this. This is very important. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Eh? I, I told you that you can live longer depending on a few factors. But one of the factors which I don't have in my notes, but I can find in the text, is that if a man shall apply his hearts to wisdom, that man will live longer. Are you, are you following what I'm preaching? At a certain age, you should be able to tell yourself, say, I mean, if you agree, and you could not be from Am I, am I, are you following what I'm preaching? I, at, at, at a certain age, I'm praying that I can continue. I'm praying that I can continue, but now, I am giving up my taste and appetite for red meat. 
I'm reverting to crabs and snails and mushrooms and uh, 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 smoke fish. At a certain age, you apply your heart to wisdom. Are you following what I'm preaching? At a certain age, you don't live your life anyhow if you want to live longer. So may the Lord help you to number your days. Are you getting the point? Then you can apply your heart to what? Wisdom. Then you can apply your heart to what? Wisdom. As you are growing up and becoming a teenager, may you number your days and realize that once my breasts have started developing, I could get pregnant if I have unprotected sex with a man. Apply your heart to wisdom. Besides, I can also catch diseases when I have multiple sexual partners. Apply your heart to wisdom. How many of you want to live long? Number your days. Apply your heart to wisdom. So God does not want us to die prematurely. God wants us to die at a good old age. Filled with good things. Our mouth must be filled with good things. That is what God desires for us. But how, how, how do I live my full length of days? Number one. Let me give the first secret. Go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. The first secret makes this message relevant for Mother's Day. Say amen to that. Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 6 verse 1. Oh, glory to God. You want to live long. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Listen, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Obey me, it is right. Verse 2. That's what we need for today. Honor thy father and mother. Here he is talking about the one that brought you forth. Honor them. Look at the way he chooses his words. Obey your parents in the Lord. So your father may be saying something that is contrary to what I'm saying. Obey me. Yet continue to honor him as a father. Continue to honor her as a mother. Obey your parents in the Lord. Honor thy father and father's face. I don't know why we celebrate Mother's Day first. But honor thy father. And now that you are wearing pink, on Father's Day, you won't even remember to wear blue. <laughs> are you getting a form when you so? But remember this is honor thy father. First mention. It is mentioned first, which is mean that fathers are more important than mothers. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The women are not happy at all. Alright. But honor thy father and mother. So this today, as we are honoring our mothers. As, as you are displaying your mother's photos and all that and wishing this and that. Listen, that thing you are doing is saving you from premature death. Look, let's read on. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It's a commandment with promise. What promise is there? What promise is there that it may be well with thee? You prosper. You prosper. As you honor your mother, you prosper. If you allow your wife to go and insult your mother, you'll be poor. I may not like my mother, but she's still my mother. I can't have any other mother. I have one. Honor thy mother that it may be well with you. And we are going to marry, but my mother says she won't come. Maybe she won't come, she can stay. We can marry. Foolish girl. Look for someone to go and talk to your mother because she needs to come. Honor her. You pack your things, you are going to sleep over. Your mom tells you, don't go. Let this guy come home. You love the guy. You feel like going. But call the guy and say, Charles, I don't want to come. I pack my bags and everything. Mom says, I can't come. Can you come over and talk to her? 
she would listen. And that guy will respect you. Because he knows that if my mother does not release me to come, I feel like coming, I want to come, my bags are packed, I feel tangy, I feel everything, but I won't come because I do not want to dishonor my mother. But if you dishonor your mother and say, oh, what can she do? Come out. And you come out, the devil will come out you. Say amen to that. Honor thy mother. She may be a sick woman. Honor her. Listen, your mother may be a sick woman. Honor her. And listen to me. Do not let anybody tell you. Listen, let people relate with their mothers and mothers. It is a curse. If you feel ashamed to say that this is my mother, you are cursing yourself. You have hips and guys are falling. Where did you get the hips from? Where did you get it from? From a mango tree. It's your mom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is it good preaching? Honor thy mother. It shall be well with thee. And thou mayest live long on earth. May. So, other factors could influence your premature departure. But honoring your mother reduces the risk of dying before your time. Hallelujah. Now, listen, it is an honor to tell whoever is following you home that it's my mother is a witch. So when we go, whatever she says, don't quarrel with her. But she's my mother. It's still an honor. Because if your mother is a policewoman, won't you tell your friends that my mother is a policewoman? She's very strict. So when we go, yes, take your car. Won't you say it? Witchcraft is also a profession. Just tell them that my mother is a witch. Say but to that. Glory to God. Am I doing good preaching? Mom may be sick, but she's still my mother. Am I preaching? She gave that to me. I'm the son of a sick woman. Shut up. Oh, good preaching. Say amen to that. How many of you know that sometimes your mother may not be beautiful? Have you seen it before? You are so beautiful and your mother is not beautiful. And you recognize that my mother is not beautiful. Have you, have you seen some before? I've not seen some before. My mother is beautiful. I look like her. And that's the proof. Say amen to that. <laughs> Glory to God. You don't like my preaching? <laughs> Listen, but my mother is not an excellent woman. And she doesn't have to be an excellent woman to be honored by me. Are you following what I'm preaching? She has her own mistakes and flaws. Uh, listen, I'm going to be preaching about desperate women. And one of the desperate women, one of the desperate mothers of the Bible, her name is called Tama. The woman who embraced her son through a sex scandal. The woman that married two brothers and all of them died. And the, grand, and the father-in-law refused to give her the third one. She dressed like a prostitute to trap her own father-in-law to sleep with her to get pregnant because she was so desperate to be a mother. I'm going to preach about her and I'm going to pray for such women. There are women who trap men to get them pregnant because yes, I love the man. The man, it's not right for the man to marry me but I want to embrace his son. I'm going to be preaching when you come at 11 o'clock. I'm going to talk about women. Very obscured women in the Bible. And great lessons out of their lives. We are going to portray Tama. A woman caught up in a sex scandal as a wonderful woman. Glory to God. Hey, ask for me. My mother is my mother. She calls us me. She gave me to me out of wedlock. Shut up. Do you know what we call wedlock? Do you know? You just grew to be 18 before you heard that word wedlock. When you were born. Did you know anything called wedlock? Shut up. That's your mother. Tama may be a foolish woman. But you, you can say anything. Glory to God. So honor thy father and thy mother. I wish I had more time. I'll spend time here. That it may be well with you. You prosper. I don't know, but I think it's one of the secrets of the little messes I enjoy financially. I think it's one of the secrets. Amen. 
some people know that pastor can be very difficult. But one person who is able to speak to me is my mother. Until I realized that sometimes she only have a smart beat to beat me. Then I said, no. Uh, now, when you speak, I also ask you a question. Honor thy mother. It may be well with you. Say amen to that. When I was getting married, she told me very early what she would like. I look for that one. Say amen to that. So I believe with all my heart that as we honor our parents, our mother, okay, say I shouldn't say father, so honor your mother. It shall be well with you. <laughs> it is a promise. Say amen to that. And this is the promise of God who cannot lie. Are you getting the point? He cannot lie. He doesn't repent. He has promised that if you honor your mother, it may be well with you and you may live long. As for surely it shall be well with you by living long. And look at it. Look at Jacob. Jacob lied to his father on the counsel of his mother. It was so well with him. Say amen to that. Honor your mother. Let's move on to the next one. You really want to see long life. Let me give you the third key. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. Is it chapter 3 verse 10? Let's go there. First Peter 3 10. Let's look at this. The second key that will give you long life. With long life, he will satisfy me. He that will love life. He that will not regret living life. And see good days. First Peter 3.10 He that will love life. Do you see it? And see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips that day. Continue. Speak no guile. I have a church of young people, so let me sign this warning. Listen. Don't lie or deceive any man for his money. If you don't love him, don't take his money. If you won't do what he's asking you to do, don't take his money. He will curse you and the curse will work. God can protect you. Refrain your lips from speaking guile. Don't think you are smart. Don't speak deceitfully to take somebody's money. You are cursing yourself when you do that. Refrain yourself. You know, hey, hey, ask for sugar that is you have to chop their money. Fool. You want to chop their money? It's a sugar that is, are you the one who gave them the money? You don't like him, you don't take his money. Don't deceive him. Speak no guile. Young man, speak no guile. You just want to sleep with me. Tell me, sister, I just want to sleep with you. Don't come and tell me you want to marry me. For what? Cheap. Be real. One day someone was speaking to someone. The person asked the person, what name will we call it? That's all. You've told me the truth. I think I also agree. But give me a name. Is it? Am I a fiancé? Am I a wife? What is it? Just give it a name. The guy was standing there. The guy yesterday, I said, I'm a fool. <laughs> the girl said, why so? I can't find any name for it. Then the girl looked at the guy and said, for speaking the truth, I'll give you the chance until we find a name. Am I preaching? Is it good preaching? Long life! Don't speak dial. Don't defraud anyone. Don't lie to anyone. Do not speak dial. Lots of people are merciful. They will give you what you are asking. Even if you tell them the truth. There are good men. They will give you whatever you are asking. Even if you tell them the truth. There are some good women. They will give you whatever you are asking. Even if you tell them the truth. Let her know. Let her know. Pastor has been preaching against fornication. But I don't want to listen to him. 
I want to sleep with you. Would you marry me? No, I haven't decided that yet. You live long. You don't date someone for years. Then leave her to go and marry another. She'll kiss you. And the kiss will work. Let's read on. Oh, go to 11. Let's go to 11. Let's go. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Look at this. And, uh, and uh, his ears are open to their prayer. But, but the Lord has blocked the numbers of those who do evil. He has blocked it. When they call, he can't hear. The call won't go through. It cannot connect. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Evil. God cannot protect you in matters like this. It is clearly written in the scriptures. In matters like this, let no one go over to defraud one another. For the Lord is at the avenger of such. May the Lord deliver you from premature death in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. May the Lord deliver you from premature death. He does, does not err in word. The same is perfect. Refrain your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from deceptive craftiness. You, you, who you swaz, man. Now they are Jew busy, for any computer business. Please. Please. It is a suicide business. You can steal everybody's money. But there are some people who steal their money. You die. In no time. I say, are you following what I'm preaching? Can I, can I repeat what I'm saying? You don't steal from me. I, I, I mean me. You don't steal from me. Because I won't steal from you. I won't take anything from you with lies. Sometimes I'm even too honest to my own disadvantage. You don't steal. It is impossible. It is listen, you don't try it. It is impossible to steal from me and prosper. It's not possible. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Glory to God. Continue. I asked a young lady, are you sure that this thing are going to buy? Unya tubum phantom pabwa. Or say, and you bought a pink shoe. Brought it. So this one is not the chubu. Which one is the chubu? It's not here. <laughs> Sometimes you don't understand it. She came to my office, she was coming to take money to go and buy something. I said, Are you sure there's no chubu inside? I said, Oh, maybe it is the last one. Are you getting to the point? You see, listen. Refrain your tongue from your lips from guile. You are no every nada. Don't say, as for me, and when I say it, you follow. No, no, no. Don't do that. It's a very dangerous thing. About who is he that will harm you if you are followers? If you are followers, who is he that will harm you? Followers of that which is what? Followers of that which is what? Say, we are the ya. Why you beat me a proud? Nobody. Lift up right and nobody can harm me. Are there simple secrets to long life and prosperity? Yeah, simple secrets. In these days, I want to preach messages where my little daughter in class one can also understand because she must go to heaven. Amen. Let me give you the third secret and then I'll close. My time is up. Say amen to that. Psalm 91 verse 14 to 16 Set your love on God And not on money Lift up your right hand and say I love him, I love him And where he goes I follow, I follow Say it, one, two, let's go And where he goes I follow, I follow, I follow I will follow him, follow him Give the Lord a clap of prayer Amen Psalm 91 verse 14 Look at this Secret to long life and prosperity Set your love on God And not on money Look at this Because he has set his love upon me Say it the Lord Because he has set his love upon me Therefore 
Therefore will I deliver him and I will set him on high. So there will be safety, there will be promotion. Will I deliver him and set him on high? Because he has known my name, my name, my name. How could you get pregnant by a man whose name you don't know? One day a woman who had eight children with a man. The man got sick at night. Both of them were my church members. So they called me and said, your son is sick. I drove my car. I picked him. I took them to test seven. And we took him to the emergency. So they were attending to him. And I was going to uh, 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 get a folder for him. And I went with his wife. They say, what is his name? He said, well, you're papa. Ata papa. I said, ah, what do you mean? I said, they say, I said, I'm in the have a friend. I said, papa. I said, I'm not For the first born to the eighth born, Oshia no no nim ni din onim no ne wonta and of friend atapapa. And for all the years they were married, she calls him atapapa. He didn't know the man's name. Hallelujah! I'm, I'm not talking about the story. I'm talking about real life. And they used to live at Mango Lane. As for Mango Lane, if the mangoes were not cut, I don't know what would have happened there. <laughs> Yo, we will do a test when the women come. So when you are preaching, tell them we are going to study Kunudi as well. But I guess I'll be drew her people can always ship their lips of their husbands. Amen. Because it's not my name. Go to verse 15 and let me close quickly. Verse 15, look at this. He shall call upon me and I will answer. He knows my name. So when he calls me, I will answer. Let's continue. He shall call upon me and I will answer. And then what will happen? I will deliver, I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him. Let's go on. And honor him. God will honor you. Go to verse 16. Go to verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him because he has set his love on me. On the contrary, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. Let's look at this. Don't set your love on money. If you set your love on money, you die prematurely. Anybody who loves money does not live long. Look at this. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's go on. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and surely we'll take nothing out of it. Let's continue. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Set your love on God and not on money. Let's go on. Let's go on quickly. If we have what to eat and what to wear, let us therewith be satisfied. So the fundamentals for life is I'm wearing something. I live in a home. I have something to eat. It's okay. I don't need anything more. When you set your love on money, how can you earn 70,000 Ghana cities and still steal from a nation every month? What do you mean by that? But they that are eager to be rich, but those that are eager for money, I mean, I can't imagine. How can you earn eight, eight point what? Four billion. Annually. What would you use the money for? The salary is 16,000. You take double pay. What do you mean? Even those of us who earn 158 Ghana cities, we are still saving. Even though we pay tithes and offerings. <laughs> want to be rich will fall into temptations. That's why some may go to prison. You are eager to be rich. You fall into temptation. Young boy, what do you need that money for? That's why some fall into temptation and die before their time. They are eager to be rich. And they will fall into a trap. And they may Hurt themselves with many foolish and hateful lust. You see, foolish lust means that some a, a young boy was going to buy a laptop. Then he told the person selling the laptop, "I need one with a webcam." The man just looked at him and said, "Who? What the webcam? Eh, hey, thing." That was the question. You see, this is sense. Little girl, you want iPhone seven, eight? You want Samsung twenty eighteen? What do you need it for? All you need is techno. I no cry to me and my baby. I ring it. It's a sorry don't. That's okay. How many of you are following what I'm preaching? 
So you see, very often we are just eager for things we don't even need. And when you are caught and they say, this is the reason why I did this. Everybody who hears say, are you a fool? Foolish and hateful last. Which drown men. It's like, it's like the sea. It drowns men into destruction and perdition. You may not just die, but you die and go to hell. Listen, from today, receive wisdom. Escape premature death. As you go home, go and honor your mother. I said, go and honor your mother. I said, go and honor your mother. As you go home, refrain your tongue from speaking guile and evil in the name of Jesus. Seek peace and pursue it in the name of Jesus. Seek peace and pursue it in the name of Jesus. As you go, set your love on God. Set your love on God. Lift up your hands and say, I'm in love with Him. I'm in love with God. I am in love with God. Chair. When we were much younger, there was a song we used to sing. I'm in love with a man duly twice my age. I'm in love with a man duly twice my age. And that was, was sung by who? Is it Buchupantin? Okay. And Mazi Priest. Yeah. I, I, am, I, am I preaching to you? Set your love on God. Say, set your love on God. If you are in love with God, you eat the best in the land. Set your love on God and not on money. You love money too much. Shame on you. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which? Which? While well, some converted after, they said, as for me, I love money. I love money. As for me, I know how to make money. As for me, many a day, I have connection. You have connection, you will be soon connected to death. While well, some converted after, have erred. From what? Have erred from what? Have erred from what? Has erred from what? You love money, you cannot attend a church like this. Because here, we disrespect money. I'm a preaching to you. What is money to a cockroach? Except to be spent because another day it shall come. Say amen to that. I'm a preaching to you. I was pray, pray, praying this dawn. And you know what? I, I said, God, give me the anointing of something. Because in the evening, my children were watching a movie of something. I just pray, I said, God, give me the anointing on something. Then the Holy Spirit asked me very interesting. Said, Do you know how that anointing looks like? I said, well, I don't know how it looks like. But I want an anointing that can make me alone. Be one man army. That is something's anointed. One man army. One man who could defend the whole nation. He, he didn't need an army. He killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an axe. And the Holy Spirit said, but that one was a special prophecy to Samson. I said, no, it's not true. The Holy Spirit said, how are you challenging? I said, yes, I'm challenging. He said, how did you know it's not true? I said, oh, one of the men of David could also kill 800 men alone. Which means that whatever anointing was on Samson, David had three men who had the same anointing. One killed 800, one killed 700, one even killed what? 300, one killed a lion-like man from Egypt, a black man. And I realized that it is possible. Listen, I, and you know I was praying because I've been waiting for your offering. It's not coming. I'm praying for grace to build a cathedral alone. Like how can Indum build a small chapel and he came into the newspapers. I believe that God can give us that same anointing. Remember a timisi near Marcusia named Jane. Despite the young told me as well because the police station view said police there for my police for no. Name my minions and I was swimming was saying, and I was swimming concrono, who beat me see my police station, a police for a homogen briber, a dentin of beating me see mass of war or no or two anointing oil. I say, Am I preaching? So I was blessed, and that's why God will bless me. I was sitting in my chair in my living room. I said, God, anoint like something. He said, What do you need it for? I said, I want to be the cathedral alone. So give me that grace to do it alone. And they have they have they, they, they have gone. They, oh, come on. 
and pierce themselves. Listen, we don't have time. We'll come back at 11. Be on your feet. I'll continue when you come back. Give the Lord a clap of friend. Amen. You shall not die before your time. Listen, the Lord will keep and protect you, you and your children. Even as your mother is coming to pray for you, something will happen in your life. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Begin to speak to the Lord right now. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's Mother's Day. And I believe that great things are happening. Glory to God. Lift up your voice. Makapara babosoto. Leke perendolo rozipaya. You are in the building this morning and you say that pastor, I have already spoken guile. I have already, I've already spoken evil. I have already dishonored my mother. I have loved money already. Pastor, what do I do? Return to the Lord. Return to the Lord and say that daddy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And the Lord will forgive you this day. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to speak to the Lord. Glory to God. Speak to the Lord. Glory to God. Makapa. Parandalababa. Zupalababa. Ziparagataya.